welcome back. If this is your first time watching, you haven't missed much. This is only my second video. If this is your second time watching, you're the best. You've been with me from the very beginning. I got a request to do a video this time. This is from my good friend Hannah Myers. She wanted to know how a fencing bout works. Well, Hannah, you read my mind. I was already thinking of doing a video in which I talk about fencing and like how it kind of works and how bouts work. So this worked out to be perfect. Excellent timing. I thank you for that. A quick little disclaimer. I fence epee and I've been fencing epee for about nine years. I will be talking mostly about epee because it's what I know. You have three different weapons in fencing. You have the foil, the epee, and the saber. If you have no idea what I just said, it's really easy to tell the difference between the three of them. The foil has the smallest guard, the epee has a really big guard, and the saber has kind of a piratey shaped guard. It's got like a thing and then like a thing that goes around and hooks onto the bottom. It's really easy to tell once you see it. So here we have a foil on the left with the small guard an epee in the middle with the big guard, and a saber on the right with a pirate guard. This is an epee. You can tell it's an epee because the guard is massive. Foil and epee are stabbing weapons. Jab, 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 jab. While saber is more of a slashing weapon. Ah! Foil and saber use what are called lames um, in order to help determine scoring. So those are the silvery vests or jackets that you'll see on some fencers. The target in Saber is everything from the waist up, including the head. Foil, the target is the torso, excluding the arms and the legs, and including the neck. And in Epe, the target is your entire body, literally from the head to the toes. I once hit a guy in the bottom of the foot. I don't really know how to this day, but I did. How a point is scored in fencing is kind of complicated. I'm not really going to go into detail about foil and saber just because I'm not super 100% sure as to the whole behind it. It's generally going to be the same idea as the epee, which I am going to be talking about. So for the epee, it looks like a stabby stab, but it is actually complex. There is no such thing as a paranoid epeist. Literally so many things electronically can go wrong with an epe. It's a nightmare. Generally what happens in foil and epe is at the very tip there is a point with a button. Now when that button is pressed down, a lot of things happen. In an epe bout, you're sitting there, you're stabbing, you go bat, 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 and the little button in the point gets pressed down. Now what happens is that point going down, it completes a circuit. So if you can see, there is a big red thing going down my blade. That is actually a wire. Well, I say a wire. Oh my God, it popped out. No! There are actually two wires in this. At the very tip, there are two little connectors and they each hook up to one wire. Button goes down and a circuit is completed. That information travels all the way down the wire and it comes out oh god how am i gonna do this it comes out right in here this is a box that's oh sorry dude i found a better way to hold it so this little box what it does it just connects the wires and what you generally do is you plug in a body cord the body cord runs in through your glove that you wear down the sleeve of your jacket and out your back. So that wire, it connects to a bigger wire that goes all the way down to the end of the piece, and then it comes all the way back to the scoring box. And what it does is it turns a light on and it makes a And that all happens the instant the button is pushed down. Now you kind of know how to make the light come on, which is super important because that's how the ref is going to know that you scored a point. So what happens next is you have to go onto the strip or what we call the piste. The piste is 14 meters long 
uh, it, and it's divided into sections. First you have the center line, then two meters away from the center line, you have what is called the on guard lines. Those are your start lines for each fencer. After that, you have three meters of space and you have what's called the warning line. That means you're getting close to the end of the strip. And then two meters away from that, you have the end lines. The end lines are super important. If you push your opponent past the end line, you get a point because they went off the playing field. So how does a fencing bout work? First of all, it's really important that you show respect during the fencing bout. There are a lot of rules that kind of just enforce respect. So you can't swear on the piece. That is a big no-no. You can't shout and do a victory yell facing your opponent or facing the referee. That's a big no-no. At the end of every bout, you have to shake your opponent's hand. If you don't shake their hand, you could get kicked out of the tournament. At the start of a bout, you go up and the referee will check your weapons in foil and epee because things can go wrong with your weapons. In Sabre, they just go, oh, good, you're here. And then the bout starts. Bouts typically go to five or 15 points. The five hit bouts are pool bouts. At a tournament, you get together and everyone is separated off into little groups or pools of generally about six to seven people. If you have eight or more people in a pool, it's going to take literally forever. In that pool, what you do is you fence everyone to five points. After you're done fencing everyone to five points, they take all your scores and they kind of add them up. So they do how many points you scored versus how many points scored against you. They subtract those two numbers and whatever's left is your indicator. With indicators, they basically take the highest number and they just list all the way down to the lowest number. Then based on that, they take the person with the highest number and the lowest number. They now have to do a direct elimination bout. Then number two and second last, direct elimination. Number three and third last, direct elimination. It keeps going like that. A direct elimination bout consists of 15 points. You have three periods of three minutes to score those 15 hits. Each period, as I said, is three minutes long and you get a one minute break in between. So in total, that's 11 minutes. Not a lot of time, but it feels like forever sometimes. If you lose a direct elimination bout, you're done. That's it for the tournament. If you win, you go on to the next one, and the next one, and the next one, until you're done, and you're finished, and you've either lost, or you've won everything, and that means you get the gold medal. Typically, four medals are actually handed out at the end of a fencing tournament. You have gold, you have silver, and then you have two bronzes. I think it's just easier to not have another fencing match and just say, okay guys, you lost in the semis, but you still got a medal. Like I said before, after a bout is finished, whether it's a DE bout, a pool bout, or even a training bout, it's polite to salute your opponent, salute the referee if you have one, and then you go up and you shake your opponent's hand with the hand that doesn't have a glove. So that's how a fencing bout kind of works. And that's, well, how a tournament works. And, well, that's how things work. So yeah, that's a really, really, really quick crash course on how fencing works. Thank you for watching. I really am enjoying doing these so far. And I hope you, the viewer, um, I hope you're enjoying watching these. I still have lots of really cool ideas for videos but I am always open to new ideas for videos or shifting around my schedule to suit what you guys want. Please, if you have suggestions or ideas for future videos, leave them in the comments section below. Or if you have any questions for me, like, hey, Brianna, you didn't really tell us anything about, then I'll happily answer them. Have a good one, and I will be back with another video around this time next week. Maybe next week I'll even post a video on Friday before the rest of the sane world has gone to bed. We can only hope. I'll see you guys next week.